Texas, on the southern edge of the Llano Estacado, lies Scurry County. This lower portion of the Great Plains was long valued by Native Americans for its supply of bison, crucial to their culture. With Western expansion, the vastness and open range of West Texas was forever changed. Buffalo hunters established a permanent settlement along Deep Creek, a tributary of the lower Colorado River. This collection of structures, first named Hyde Town, would become Snyder. But few towns in West Texas prospered without rail and the tracks finally reached Snyder in 1908. You weren't a town that had any staying power unless you had a railroad because the railroad could bring families in, it could bring goods, it could make them, uh, you know, connect them with the whole world. So it was a time of great excitement when the railroad came through. In May of 1911, the first passenger train arrived in Snyder. The depot that was built would bear witness to a century of history, including troop trains for two world wars, and would welcome home soldiers on leave during the Korean and Vietnam Wars. The era of passenger trains gave citizens of Scurry County the opportunity to celebrate the 1936 Texas Centennial in Fort Worth and travel to the east and west coasts to visit family and friends. They could make a quick overnight trip to Houston, go to Lubbock to shop, or take a school field trip and return home the same day. Santa Fe Employee Benefits gave families opportunities to vacation and travel far beyond the borders of Scurry County. The depot also played a pivotal and vital role during the oil boom of the 1950s. The depot was designed by architect Louis Curtis, a Canadian who gained professional fame in Kansas City, Missouri with some of the earliest designs that would influence the construction of modern skyscrapers. Larry Harris is a Houston architect who has studied Curtis's style. Lewis Curtis created a very unique, uh, some would say idiosyncratic style. As you know, the, his talent and career go further, um, he becomes uh, less influenced by existing architectural styles, uh, but more influenced by current building technology, and specifically uh, the development of like plate glass windows, and even more importantly, reinforced concrete. Curtis was one of the first American architects to see in concrete the potential for a new language. And uh, what he saw was the fact that uh, concrete could be almost molded like a sculptor would mold clay. This depot was built to last. The terracotta tiles filled with concrete were pieced together like a huge jigsaw puzzle. Each piece meticulously positioned to hold the next one in place. A quartet of concrete depots was commissioned by the Santa Fe Railroad, and in a period of two years, Curtis's structure stood in Lubbock, Sweetwater, Post, and Snyder. As an architect, Curtis's influence is still felt today in his adopted hometown of Kansas City. That city's Bowley Building is one of less than 30 of Curtis's 200-plus projects still standing. Just 45 miles north of Snyder stands the Post Area Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center. Together with Fort Worth's Tarrant County Courthouse, the two are among the few remaining examples of Curtis's work. In July of 2017, Disney World announced a new theater on their Main Street USA would be a replica of Kansas City's Williswood Theater, designed by Lewis Curtis in 1902. The railroad culture and influence of the Santa Fe has had a long-lasting impact on the community and local families. The railroad fundamentally changed the way people, goods, and mail were transported. Avon Rushing worked for the railroad for nearly 43 years, many of them as a telegraph operator. The railroad was uh, good to me. They paid uh, reasonably well and had good benefits for me and my family, and uh, I just, I just, it truly enjoyed it. I appreciated it because, you know, that was our life. That was our life. That was our living, and I appreciated it, that we had it, and that it was so convenient for us. Today, 
People look back on the depot with memories of how it touched their lives. Nancy Smith's father worked on the railroad and the family lived in a bunkhouse situated directly along the rail line. The bunkhouses, they, they were real long and on each end of it, it was a great big huge room and then it, there'd be three rooms and that would accommodate a family. Ben Vesey was a maintainer, responsible for railroad crossings operating properly, and he took great pride in his work. I was happy to work for the Santa Fe. In fact, for just about all the time I worked for the railroad, Santa Fe Railroad, they were lucky to run their trains over my track. I was, I was proud of what I did. We went through and checked every light bulb on all of them, check the alignment to see that people could see them. If they were dirty, we cleaned them. As a 16-year-old, Nathan Benitez hauled water to railroad workers as a member of a temporary work crew called an Extra Gang. His father worked for the Santa Fe Railroad for 35 years. And he was able to get a brand new car when he moved to Snyder. He bought a 1936 Chevrolet, and then later on, of course, he went and got him a, a radio, and he kept us with food and everything. Many of the employees remember interesting times working in and out of the depot. We were not supposed to have radios in the depot. The uh, dispatcher office at Amarillo rang, rang my phone, and I answered it. And he said, uh, do you have a radio there in the office? And I said, oh, uh, and he said, well, I just got, we just got news that President Kennedy got killed. Said I was trying to find out some, some something news on it. Okay, I'll see what I can find out. I never did tell him I had a radio, yes or no. Just me out there, me out there, and the rattlesnakes. <laughs> yes. I could tell you some stories about rattlesnakes. And the water boiled, and they just carry the pails of water to the people that's working. Instead of them coming to the keg to get the water, I carry the water to them. Roxy Small's father, Nathan, was the station manager and also operated the telegraph. He could be sitting there tapping down a message to the train and carry on a conversation <laughs> with you and never miss a beat on the key. In July of 1968, the last passenger train arrived in Snyder, and overnight there were drastic changes in the rail service. Both waiting rooms were closed, the baggage room closed, the railway express agency closed, and postal service ceased. The only office would be for the local Santa Fe agent, and by the early 1990s, the depot was used as storage for the track and signal department. With the ever-changing business of the rail industry, Burlington Northern bought what had become the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway in 1996. Trains passing through Snyder would then bear the new logo and name of Burlington Northern Santa Fe, or BNSF. The merger was managed by Warren Buffett, American business magnate, investor, chairman, and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. Discussions as early as 2009 began between the Scurry County Historical Commission and BNSF to seek a path of preservation and a long-term repurposing for the depot. Every effort was made by the Historical Commission to try and comply with strict BNSF guidelines associated with any transfer of rail property to another entity. These discussions led to a stalemate and a railroad decision that the depot would continue to be used for storage. In 2011, its 100th anniversary, the depot was placed on the list of Texas most endangered places by Preservation Texas, a private, nonprofit organization dedicated to statewide preservation. Unfortunately, in October of 2016, Word reached the Historical Commission that Burlington Northern Santa Fe had slated the depot in Snyder for demolition. An online petition, intense news coverage, 
dedicated support from Texas State Representative Dustin Burroughs and a local rally won the depot a reprieve. Several discussions with prospective local parties followed, but a preliminary evaluation of the depot proved the nearly $1 million renovation estimate to be cost prohibitive. Additionally, inability to comply with strict BNSF guidelines made it evident the battle to save the depot was lost. Offering hope, a collector of historic structures stepped up with a plan to purchase, dismantle the depot, and move it to Austin. This would ensure the Lewis Curtis Depot and a piece of Snyder history would be preserved. But after several engineering assessments of the depot and careful study of Texas Highway's weight restrictions, the plan was deemed financially unfeasible and was abandoned. In any preservation or restoration project, it all boils down to money. Once again, the Historical Commission was notified that the Lewis Curtis Santa Fe Depot was slated for demolition in October 2017. This time, there would be no reprieve. With only days to spare, Dr. Elizabeth Loudon, retired professor of architecture at Texas Tech University, brought a team to Snyder to digitally capture every minute architectural feature of the depot in a process called 3D laser scanning. This technology will make it possible for future generations to experience the depot from anywhere in the world. We can create a 3D, a three-dimensional walkthrough of the depot where we can recreate the depot on the, on the internet and you can actually walk through it and look at it. But the computer rendering will be expensive and future fundraising will be necessary to complete the 3D project. We can say in a sense we've saved the depot. Prior to demolition, key pieces of the depot were meticulously removed from the structure and generously given to the Scurry County Museum by the railroad for inclusion in a future exhibit. We wanted uh, one Santa Fe emblem we wanted the two flower pods. We wanted one set of letters that said Snyder. And then we also got approximately 17,000 of the brick pavers that were around the outside of the depot. From November 6 to November 14 of 2017, Demolition crews took down the depot, delivering 569 tons of debris to the landfill. Hauntingly, satellite imagery still showed the depot standing as of spring 2018, but the depot is very much gone. Very simply, when a building is lost, it's, it's gone forever. Uh, I mean, we can have you know, wonderful tributes to, the, to a demolished building, uh, you know, we can republish uh, vintage photographs and, you know, interview people who may have been, you know, experienced that original building, but it's gone. Um, you know, you'll never be able to, you know, reach the doorknob that's been, you know, where the, the bronze has been rubbed by years of use. You'll never walk across creaky floors. You'll never see sunlight, you know, on the uh, a carved ornament. Um, you know, it's unfortunately just a memory and uh, so many cases it's uh, you know a very regretful loss. But a part of the depot lives on. In the early 20th century bricks were in high demand for sidewalks and streets and those made in Coffeyville, Kansas were frequently laid at railroad depots including the Santa Fe Depot in Snyder. Thanks to the creativity of one woman with the Scurry County Museum, an important piece of history is available to everyone. This fundraising effort will help provide much needed capital for future preservation projects in Scurry County. My name is Erica Jane Christian and I'm the museum educator here at the Scurry County Museum. One of the things we had on hand from the depot were all of the bricks. We wanted to see if we couldn't transfer or print um, a really nice detailed image of the depot onto the, the bricks. We make certain that they are uh, completely clean of, and free of dirt and grime. We let those dry. We have the image of the depot and it's transferred to the surface using a gel medium. So when we lay that down there and we have our image transferred onto it, 
we let it dry and what actually happens is the toner from the ink is left behind in that plastic so it's kind of uh, set into the image. After that we're able to uh, coat it to make certain that it's sealed, number them and uh, they're, they're ready to go. The Snyder Santa Fe Depot stands no more and the world of historic preservation took notice. For 106 years, the reinforced concrete building withstood the rumble of steam engines, countless tons of cargo, and untold numbers of passengers, but ultimately was unable to withstand the lack of a long-term plan for repurposing, liability concerns, strict railroad guidelines, costly renovation, and decades of neglect. It's been a while since I since I heard it, but I I would be quite rusty if I tried to use it. I'm quite sure. S N Y D E R. <laughs>